Hey, what's up YouTube? Zyrene here, and today I'm going to do something a little different. It's not a guide on a champion, it's a guide on this new meta that TPA has brought out and that Curse Academy has kind of brought into the challenger scene as well. And I saw it multiple times yesterday when I was casting the wellplayed.org LCS promotional qualifiers from Curse Academy and Team Vex actually managed to counter it. I'm going to explain the entire thought process, at least what I think is core to the comp and how the composition works. So. It has three bruisers in it, if you're unfamiliar with this. There is no Marksman ADC. Their ADC is replaced by somebody like Trindamir Jax, and that actually works out for them. Their support is typically Annie or Fiddlesticks. Their mid laner is Nidalee or Jace, and their jungler is J4 or Vi, and Shivana has always been the top laner, even when TPA ran the composition. So the solo laners are both the ADC and the top laner and then you put the support with the mid laner and then the jungle goes off and does his thing. So what you see in parentheses here are all of the people that were used in Team Vex's composition that actually beat this composition and I will explain it in just a second here. So as you can see it's Shivana. The reason it's Shivana is because Shivana can dive ADCs and this is essentially an anti marksman composition. If you are running a marksman versus this composition they're going to need extra extra protection. Because think about it, a Shivana with Flash, and the, he rushes Blade of the Rune King as well. And I have my little thing at the bottom that explains why Blade of the Rune King is so good. The Q applies two hits, and your E does 2% of max HP's magical damage. Now, the Blade of the Rune King does 5% of your current HP as physical damage. And if you use a double hit with that, with the Q, it's 10% plus the 4% from your E added on, plus 15% of their maximum HP if you use the active of the Blade of the Rune King, which is 29% of the person's HP, bringing them down to about 71% give or take a little bit of HP, possibly HP regen in that little moment there. Then you add on the damage that the double hit actually did from your base stats, from the damage that Shivana actually has in terms of AD onto that. And the fact that she'll have burnout on and, and all of these other things in the fact. So that's equated in there. So what Shivana does that other people don't, you, you're probably sitting there thinking, why Shivana? Why not somebody else? Shivana can get to you in three ways. She can use her dragon to get to you get to the back line, use her burnout to speed herself up, and then Blade of the Ruined King to slow you down, and Flash as well. So she has four ways to distance close on you. The leap, the movement speed increase, which lasts a long time, and it gets more seconds on it the more you hit somebody, and then it has a very low cooldown. And if you get condemned away by like a vein, you can just run straight at her again. And if you Blade of the Ruined King, you slow them, speed yourself up, and the fact that she has Flash. So if you use Dragon's Descent on somebody, they E backwards like a Caitlyn, you're just going to come straight at them again with your W. If they flash, you flash after them. There's more than enough ways to close that distance. So Shivana brings four distance closers to the table, and she is the dive pressure character. Then the jungler is a dive buddy. So they use J4 or Vi, and they go after into the back line, and what they do is they start the fight off. They allow Shivana to get that distance and disallow the ADC from escaping. So they're a dive buddy for that. Now... The AP Poker can also be AD, it can be a Jace. And this composition is very elaborate because you put your, the support with the Poker. So you leave the two AD characters, the Shivana and the Trindamira Jax, off by themselves and you put the support with the mid laner. Why is this? Because there are multiple things here and I'm going to point it out here. And the reason that it's Annie or Fiddlesticks, we did see Lissandra come out from Curse Academy. It wasn't as effective, but it can work because you need a hard point to click CC. That is the point of the support, is to keep that poker safe, or to dive as well. So Fiddlesticks, if Fiddlesticks flashes and fears, which has been the main support in these compositions, that's three seconds of CC on the enemy ADC if you want to take them out, or somebody else, or a high priority target, or during the lane phase, you can help defend your poker from being destroyed. So I'm not going to call them a mid laner, I'm going to call them a poker for this one. So there's two divers, a damage dealer and a poker, and then the hard CC, which is the support. So I have a little nice map of Summoner's Rift here in paint, and we're going to say we put both our support and our poker there. And if it's there against one enemy, if they haven't reacted, then what's going to happen is these two, my jungler and my top laner, are all going to converge on the enemy red, when we see him go because we will contest the blue at first because the supports here right and it's in Italy so we can always make an attempt to steal at level one if there's ward coverage there and if we see that it's not there or they're starting red we can actually have our bottom laner come up with our jungler and it's a four on what would possibly be one one two 
three, four. But over here, if it's just the top laner, this person and our jungler, it's a four on three. So a four v three would happen here. My paint skills are amazing. And that's basically the whole point of this composition is to get jungle control because you put hard CC in the mid from the support. So I'm gonna go back to this. And the hard CC keeps you safe. It's very great late game. So Annie Philistics both fill the role and so does Lissandra as well. I'm putting Nami in there because that's part of the composition that Team Vex used. So there's a lot of things that feed into this. The fact that you can't really build a certain resistance against this is key. Nidalee does AP damage. Jace does AD damage, so either or, depending on what you want. Vi and J4 basically do all AD damage. That's an AD dealer. Shivana has a huge mix of damage. Her Dragon's Descent is magical damage. Her E is magical damage. Her W is magical damage. And then her Q is physical damage, plus the Blade of the Ruin King is physical damage all throughout it. So there's the mixture there. And if you get a Trindamir, he's all physical damage, but if you get a Static Shiv, it's a lot People underestimate it. It's a lot of magical damage. So when you use Spinning Slash, you actually charge it because Static Shift charges on hits and on movement. So when you use Spinning Slash, you get the movement that you normally would. So you're doing damage, moving at the same time, and charging your Static Shift. So Trindamir is fantastic with that item. Gives him a hybrid damage there. And Jax has hybrid damage as well. And so you can't really build one resistance. It's not like an all AD composition in the essence of it. So that's a fantastic part of this. And what they do is they basically strangle your ADC to death. They make sure your jungler can't contest buffs without being outnumbered. And it's just a fantastic composition all around. TPA pioneered it, Curse Academy's picked it up, and they've used it all throughout the last couple of games that they've played. There's an exception of, I think, one or two games where they haven't. But they, they beat Complexity with it, and they beat Quantic with it as well. Team Vex, on the other hand, actually had a counter to this in their back pocket. Now, they ran Malphite. Vi, AP Corky, Lee Sin, and Nami. Now, Nami kind of takes the role of the hard CC. They banned out Fiddlesticks and Annie, so it forced the support onto a Lissandra, which I thought Fiddlesticks was the core of this, this meta here because the hard CC, so they tried to use Lissandra instead. I think Annie may have been their backup, and Nami kind of fills the same role. It's not point and click, but it is a CC that can hit multiple people, and it's very, very good. So the whole point of this composition, though, is AP Corky has a lot of wave clear. He has more wave clear than Nidalee does, and it's from a range. So it's AP damage there, put him in the middle, and he can wave clear and stop the tower pressure. Nami keeps him safe, keeps him healed up, so they actually won that lane very, very slowly because Lissandra offers nothing to Nidalee. If Nidalee gets hit with poke, she has to back. She has to back eventually. She'll run out of mana by healing herself. You know, you'll get a chalice first, and then eventually you'll be in a good good place. But that's also part of the composition is when you have the support and a poke type character up against a mid laner, you'll poke them out very, very quickly. And the way to counter that is just to take your support and put them up in the mid lane, but that leaves your ADC alone down bottom facing somebody like a Trindamir or a Jax, who's just going to push, push their shit in. Uh, you know, for lack of a better term, that's what's going to happen. They're going to get utterly destroyed. And... So the way to counter this is to counter in picks. The AP Corky brings all of the poke damage that you need for this, but here's the thing, is Lee Sin and Malphite are attack speed slow characters. So what they ended up doing here is Lee Sin built full damage, and he kept diving in alongside the Vi, alongside the Malphite, who would dive in. They tried to get Trindamir's ultimate blown and then disengage the fight as fast as they could. And that worked out perfectly for them because they ended up doing that and then they would re-engage and Lee Sin did a lot of damage. He could, he was able to take out Lissandra very, very quickly. His kick was doing upwards of 1,000 damage. The base on it and max rank is 600. And then it was like plus 329 at one point. And then it got even further than that. So the Lee Sin became the ADC. He was the attack damage carry. He wasn't a marksman, but he was the attack damage carry for that team. And he had, a, an, a, he had an attack speed slow in his Tempest Cripple and Malphite had an attack speed slow with his Ground Slam. And then the fact that Malphite also built a Randuin's Omen meant that Trindamir, Shivana, J4 all had a t slow attack speed, and it basically shut down the composition. The way to shut down this composition is to bring attack speed slows, multiple ones to the table, possibly a Frozen Heart, Randuin's Omen combination, and keep your ADC peeled for it. But they didn't bring an ADC to this, they brought the lease in for the dive potential onto the backline so they could reach Nidalee. So that's how this composition works. 
It's an anti-ADC composition that has three bruisers in it, and one poker, and one hard CC character. So I hope you guys enjoyed my ex explanation of the composition, and you might have a better understanding of it now, and how to deal with it. If you do have an ADC, the ADC has to be far in the back line, and you have to account for all of the members. The problem is that your front line will eventually get poked off of objectives by Nidalee or Jace, and it's very, very hard to deal with. Now the Jace, also allows your di your dive team to dive even harder because it gives them that movement speed increase. So the synergy within this team is very, very brilliant. Curse Academy has been doing a fantastic job with it, and we'll see if they run it again. And we'll, I'm looking forward to seeing how this develops and how marksmen have to deal with this. So thanks for watching, you guys.